Okay, so uh, let's talk about the uh, Cauchy Riemann equations. <clears throat> so we have the following theorem. Um, if f of um, xy with real part u, imaginary part uh, v is uh, c differentiable from uh, last week. Uh, then <clears throat> uh, you, the partial derivative in x is equal to partial in y and partial in y is equal minus uh, partial in x for the imaginary. <clears throat> and we have a partial converse. So that's one. <clears throat> if uh, u, v are continuously differentiable, so their derivative is continuous, we also call it c1. And uh, uh, they satisfy cr. Uh, then f plus uiv is um, c differential. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, the extra condition is this. Uh, otherwise, we will have done uh, back and forth arrow, but uh, uh, we need to require that the derivative is continuous. Okay. So let me give you um, a heuristic proof first. Um, linear mapping. Uh, it ties with what you do in math 291. Okay, so I'm only going to prove the, the first theorem. Okay. Uh, so a, a function f is uh, c differentiable uh, if we had this limit, right? So z naught plus h minus f of z naught over h goes to uh, some some element uh, which we called it f of prime z naught some complex number. Okay. So in other words, uh, f of z naught plus h is equal to w times h uh, plus some error in h going to zero. All right. Now, uh, Recall from um, vector calculus uh, R2 differentiable is the following uh, F of uh, X, comma Y, let me write it like this, plus H1, H2. Uh, right, f of uh, x0, y0 is equal to the Jacobian of f. So Jacobian of f at x0, y0 um, times the vector x1, x2, and then there's some error. Um, and this Jacobian was what? It was you know, um, partial x of the of the first component u um, uh, y of the again first component partial x of second component partial y of um, second component. So this is the Jacobian. Okay, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to compare these two definitions. Right, uh, we have um, you know, so W is W1 plus I W2. So if you multiply them, <clears throat> you get this. And so this is this vector with these two components. So, so in R2, um, this is nothing else but W1 uh, minus W2, uh, W2, W1 times H1, H2, okay? So by using, here we use the identification of C with, uh, with R2. So, all right, okay, uh, therefore, uh, by equating the two expressions, we have Jacobian of f at uh, x naught y naught is equal to this matrix. And what is this guy? This was ux, uh, ui, vx, vy. So uh, we get the following. ux is w1, ui is minus w2. I'm, I'm uh, equating entries. vx is w2 and uh, vy is w1. Okay, and that's it. So then that gives you um, q of x is equal to v of y. And um, u of y is equal to minus v of x. And so, okay, so that's one uh, heuristic. Uh, and yeah, so this is one proof of the of the theorem. Now let me do the one from the, the book. Uh, using limits. <clears throat> All right. Um, F of prime Z naught is defined as this limit. <clears throat> And um, <clears throat> delta z is delta x plus i delta y. Uh, this is our h from above. <clears throat> All right. Um, so this is the origin, and this guy is going to zero. Right. But um, since this limit exists, we can do it in any direction we like. So since uh, the limit exists, we can approach uh, 0, 0 in any direction, in any path. Okay? So, um, to keep it simple, one direction is uh, by letting delta y to be zero. So we go along, uh, we go along uh, x. So, so f prime of z naught uh, is equal to uh, z naught plus delta x. And Okay, so that's one case. 
And the second case is we go along, uh, we go along delta y and we set the x direction to be zero. So again, we get f prime z naught as delta y goes to zero to be this. All right. And there's an i, right? Because delta z is i, delta x plus i, and delta y. All right. Um, so let's work with the first guy. I use that f is u plus iv. Uh, that gives you um, the following using not delta x and then plus i. Okay, so here we use that u is uh, that f is u plus i v and that the limit is linear. So we split the limit. Okay, now let's do the second guy. We use the same fact, f of is u plus i v. Uh, like this. Same thing, I just replace uh, uh, delta x by delta y. Okay, so uh, the i cancel out here, so that's out. Um, okay, so what is this? This is the derivative in x, so this is u of x. And what is this? Uh, this is again derivative in x, so v of x. Uh, what is this? This is uh, v of y. And what is this? So we have an i here, so 1 over i of uh, u of y. Okay. Good. Uh, but these are supposed to be equal, right? So u of x plus i vx is equal to f of prime z naught which is also equal to 1 over i u y plus v y. And so equate real and imaginary, and you get u x v y, and uh, u of y is minus v x. And, um, right, so let's write as minus that to make it more clear. Okay, so please remember this relation. Uh, Andrew will uh, will use this later. So formula for derivative. Okay. Okay, what else? Mm. I think that's fine. Um, so this is one of your exercises, so I, I will not do it. But a corollary of this, this is exercise 32. Um, it's the following. The uh, the level sets of uh, U and uh, V are orthogonal. So, uh, and this is called so. I have it up here. So uh, these are called um, the flux and the uh, echo potential lines. So we have V equals C and U. And uh, as a hint, this follows because the gradient of U times gradient of V is, uh, is zero. Okay, so that's enough for the theory for cost theorem.